It is difficult. It is difficult to build a better world. It's difficult just to build ourselves into better people. Both of those building tasks take a lot of work. Both involve a lot of serious effort, a lot of sweat, a lot of sacrifice. So what's the best way to begin that difficult task? Antoine de Saint-Exupéry has suggested, if you want to build a great ship, don't begin by drumming up a great many people to gather wood. Don't begin by dividing the work and giving orders. Instead, begin by inspiring within them a joy and a yearning for the vast and endless sea. Jesus, it so appears, tries the very same tactic this morning in our scripture. Jesus says, I have said all of these things. I have done all of these things. So that my joy may be in you, so that your joy may be complete. Only after this, after trying to inspire and instill joy within us, does Jesus give us the new and difficult task, the commandment to love one another as he has loved us. And Jesus says, this is what it will take. The greatest love is to lay down your life for another. Well, that is serious and enormously difficult task. One that no doubt will require sacrifice, as Jesus says. Suddenly building a ship seems relatively easy in the midst of this. So why then face with a difficult and serious project and work, does Saint Exupéry and Jesus begin by talking about and trying to instill joy? It seems like we should just buckle down. We should just get to it. People are hurting. We need this better world now. They are hurting. We are hurting. There is an urgency to build a better world. Joy just seems an unnecessary, even a distracting luxury in this task. But is it? I want to show you something this morning which may explain a little bit why both Exemplary and Jesus insist on beginning with joy. I have here a cup. It's an empty cup. It's actually a little thing of sour cream at one point in time. It is a spiritually dry and empty cup. A cup within which there is no spirit of joy. And this is a ping pong ball. It represents the hope that lives within us. The potential that we have individually and together to build a better world. But you may have noticed in your life, as I have in mine, when we start off on building a better world, some great hope that we have, it seems like there's a downward, even a depressive, I might say, pull on those grand hopes and efforts that make it difficult to accomplish. I want to demonstrate that downward pull. So I put all the hope and potential of the ping pong ball within us. It lies right there, but there's a downward pull. Here it comes. Well, I'll just leave that over there. <laughs> I saw that coming, so I have another ping pong ball right here. You may have noticed that that ping pong ball, that potential, that hope, it didn't really go anywhere. I think it will come.
couple feet, but not very far at all. Not when placed in an empty cup, but I happen to have right here water. The very Spirit of God, a whole bottle of joy conveniently disguised as St. Regis bottle of water. <laughs> Let me put about half of that water into the cup. Let me get it going and active. We need a moving spirit. Let me put the ball back in. And this time, let's see what happens. from building a better world and making of ourselves better people. If we are to carry out Jesus' new commandment to love others as he has loved us, if we are to have the ability to lay down our lives, to make sacrifices, to lift others up first, first, we need the anti-gravitational, spirit-uplifting force of joy. The joyful spirit of God's spirit within us. For it is that that gives us the vitality and the strength needed to complete the difficult task ahead of us. <clears throat> and so I ask you, if Jesus said what he said, that he has come to put joy within us, that our joy may be complete. How's that going? Are we joyful? Are we inspiring joy in those around us? Are we laying the groundwork to accomplish great tasks, difficult tasks, or are we just drumming up people and barking orders, telling them to seemingly do the impossible? Do we, can we even acknowledge the importance of joy in our lives, joy in our spiritual life? I ask, because so often it seems the church, religion in general, so focused on judgment and sin and guilt and sacrifice that it leaves joy behind despite what Jesus said in our scripture this morning that he has said all of this that our joy may be complete how might an intentional practice of joy enhance our lives of faith what might it make possible? What might it inspire in us and in others in our world? Play is an intentional practice of joy. Play. And yet we play so seldom, especially as adults. 
The dictionary definition of play is this, an activity of enjoyment and of recreation rather than an activity designed for serious or practical purpose. Play and the joy it creates recreates us. They lift our spirit. They connect our spirit with the spirit of God, with the joy and the spirit of Jesus that he hopes to instill within us. But we must remember, of course, that play is not a substitute for serious, practical, purposeful work. The spirit of joy and play is what sustains serious and practical and purposeful work. It is the spirit that keeps our spirit alive in the hardship of hard work. The joyful vision of what all that hard work will make possible is what inspires others to take it on, and it is what will sustain them throughout that work, giving them the endurance to be effective, giving orders and commandments without first giving joy to build and work and love. It simply does not work. It tends to be ineffective. That is the truth that St. Exuperate and Jesus know. So first, they talk about joy. <clears throat> Halloween has become the second most popular holiday in America. Why? <clears throat> we long for, we crave, play, and joy. Depression is on the rise. Anxiety is on the rise. Burnout at work is on the rise. And it has diminished our spirit. When given permission to play, people flock to that opportunity. And so, this Halloween, in the midst of our everyday lives, in our spiritual life, and even, and especially when we face important, daunting, and difficult tasks, give yourself permission to laugh and play and embody joy.